Harry, an Englishman over in England, how did you get involved? Uh, well, I was, um, you know, as a, as a, a small child uh, growing up, uh, my, my grandfather used to breed and own and train point to point hunter chasers, and so I used to get dragged around point to points every weekend, and I loved it, and I uh, grew up on ponies, hunting, pony club, and uh, so I was always very into it uh, back then. I actually wanted to be a jockey when I was growing up, but um, but uh, I had a few point point rides when I was 16. I was very, very bad, so I decided to go to Australia um, when I was 18, when I left school, uh, and academic career was was uh, fairly short-lived and not particularly, I mean, um, luckily for me, out of the, the siblings, I was I always struggled uh, the school in a big way, mm -hmm. so couldn't wait to leave and and pursue horses. So I went to Australia. I actually worked. I didn't work in racing at all in Australia. I was over there for about four years, um, working on cattle stations, farms, breaking right. in horses and uh, cowboy. A bit of a cowboy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a weekend cowboy. No, no, it was good fun, and uh, I learnt lots and uh, worked some great people. And when I came back. Uh, I th you know, obviously I grew up in Lambourne, so if, or just outside Lambourne. I've been there all my life, so uh, it made sense to go back into racing. So I went to work for Malcolm Bastard, um, and that was, a, and I, I went to work for Malcolm there for three years, and that was a, a fantastic experience. He was a great man to to work for. I had no aspirations of being a trainer whatsoever. Um, I enjoyed the breeze up horses. We used to break in, you know, for some fabulous clients like the Queen and. Um, and John Gosden, William Haggis, we used to have a lot of overflows for and whatnot. So um, yeah, they were, they were a good, good three years. No walking around with your hands in your pockets at Malcolm's and right. we used to feed at 4.30 in the morning. And, um, it, was, it was good fun, but it was, um, it was hard. Um, and then I set up my own business just on mum and dad's place um, at home, luckily. And again, like I asked Gavin, what age do you know? What's this, what's uh, the was about, I was about 26, it was okay. 2007. And uh, yeah, just set up a little pre-training business. I was breaking in a few horses for Tom Dascom, um, who was just getting going at the time. He was starting to snowball and um, he was starting to get more and more horses. And, and so I was breaking in his horses in his yard. I, I, would, I would do it every, every autumn before I went back to Malcolm's. And, um, and Tom was needed some, somewhere to keep some horses because he was overflowing. And we were just having a cup of coffee in, in his yard, and I said, well, should we come have a look at what I've done? Because I've built five stables, you know, and he came off and had a look, and he was like, I'll send you some horses today, this afternoon. So, so we started, started off from there, and then um, Nicky Henderson's next door, um, grew up next door to Nicky, and, and went to see Nicky, and he said he'd help me out. So and then Tom Daskin went off to Cheshire, and Nicky sent me more horses, and then we became a satellite yard for Nicky, and, and then we were full up of Nicky's horses, and. Then I got the bug for it. <laughs> Lovely. So I, did, I wanted to train, went to see Nicky, and um, everyone told me I was mad, but I'm mad anyway, so that's fine. And uh, started with five horses, and and that was a tough winter. Um, I had to lay off uh, a couple of the lads that were friends of mine that uh, were very good riders, and I could do five on my own, and it was, wasn't easy, but I couldn't keep them. Okay. And just I, had I sort of you know towards the end of that winter it was a case of something's going to need to happen otherwise i'm going to have to go back to nikki and go back to pre-training but um i bought a, a horse for a couple of grand um his dubai destination he was out of a five furlong um sprinter and uh i just liked the look of him he's kind of a big st sort of store type mm -hmm. he came out of tom tate's yard and i won a bumper with him the first time out at newbury 100 to one mm -hmm. and i managed to get him sold owned half of him and that was my make that was my make. That was your snowball effect. That was, yeah. And then the second season was almost just as hard, but you know, I had a few more horses, just a little bit of notice, and managed to get the, a couple of the lads back, still with me now, and used to be with me at Henderson's Day. So, um, yes, yeah, so, and, and um, you know, obviously uh, built it up from there. That was in 2012, was when I took the license out. So, and now we're up to, to 48, um, which is a good number. Um, and obviously, very lucky to have some. Some good clients and good. enjoying it.